Hi guys, how are you today? Hope you're having a sunny day. Ready for new stories? I have five today. Let's go to the first one. I, female 39, have always had an almost non-existent relationship with my half-sister, female 59, and half-brother, male 57, in large due to our age gap and that our father passed away when I was two years old. I grew up with my mother and always saw myself as a single child, even though my mother would talk about my siblings. Starting from when I was 14 years old, my siblings and I have made some attempts to create a relationship, but it has never worked. We are fundamentally different people, and if we didn't share a family connection, I would have never spent time with them, so we are low contact. I had a rocky start in my work life, having a degree I couldn't use. I got to school for a new degree when I was 30. It worked out good, and I'm today working a high paying job. From my days living on minimum wage and studying, I have learned to take care of my money. I was recently able to buy my own house. I don't have children and no expensive hobbies. All this adds up to me being able to put money away each month, which is a big deal for me, a security. When my father passed away, we decided the inheritance so my mother, they were married, got 50% and us children split the other half equally. My siblings didn't want any of the memorabilia my father collected. Little value, but cool things. I have them now. Anyway, the other day my sister calls me. I'm a little taken aback, but okay. I can live with awkward small talk for 20 minutes. Out of the blue, she asks me if I have a will. I didn't think, but just blurt out yes. She then asks me if her and my brother's children are the beneficiaries. I'm honest and say no. I have met my brother's two girls once when I was about 20 years old. I have never met my sister's children. She then starts to question who I will leave everything to. I say that father's memorabilia will go to an aviator museum. Some things will be given to close friends as they hold shared memories. The rest is to be sold and together with my savings be split evenly between an organization helping people with alcohol and drug addiction and cancer research. My sister is livid, telling me that that money is money that can make a big difference in my siblings' children's lives. Sure, but I don't feel obligated to provide that for them. If I wanted to leave my money to someone, it would be my BF son. I've seen him grow and been like an aunt to him. Now my brother is calling and saying that I'm being cruel and that I'm stealing both the past and the future from his children. So am I the idiot for not including my siblings' children in my will? Not the idiot. You don't even really know those people. You leave your things to whoever you want. Not the idiot. You barely have contact with your sister and she calls you out of the blue to ask if you have a will? Also, you're only 39. Something sounds fishy, like she wants something. Keep your guard up. Not the idiot. You don't know your siblings' children. They don't know you. You aren't particularly close to your siblings and never have been. It's entitled to the point of being absolutely tacky that they think they can shake you down for money on the basis of shared DNA, which never meant anything to them during your formative years and doesn't mean much now. In my entire family, there is not a single woman who has graduated university. Mum went briefly, but dropped out in the first year when she had me and married dad. I did the same thing, minus the marriage, and my aunt also did this, minus the baby. Therefore. My younger sister was set to be the first woman in our family to graduate uni. This was a really big deal to her, and I was aware of this. When my sister started looking at universities, I admitted to my boyfriend that I was jealous, as I never got to complete my degree. He suggested that I go back to uni, offering to help me out. I applied to a few courses and got accepted on one. When I started my new course, my sister was 17 and planning to attend uni the following year while I was 25 and had been out of an education for six years. I didn't tell my family that I went back to uni. The reasoning for this, and I know this is going to sound silly, is that I feel like they forget me at times. I think it's because I'm sort of the family F up. Because of this, I wait for them to contact me, which they only do two to three times a year. And when they do, I only share information they ask for. Partly because I don't want to share with them, and partly because I feel like they don't care about the answer. My boyfriend proposed recently. I told my cousin, who told my parents. They called me to confirm it. On the call, Mum said something about starting wedding planning ASAP, to which I responded that I was too busy polishing off my dissertation. I didn't realize what I said until after I said it, but Mom realized to have a dissertation, I need to be a couple months off graduating. She told my sister, who is currently 20 and in her second year of uni, meaning she's a full year off graduation. She called me a C, accusing me of trying to outdo her due to jealousy. I admitted that I was jealous at first, but I'd always wanted to get my degree, so when my fiancé offered to help me, I accepted the offer and was more focused on the idea of getting a degree than outdoing her. 
My sister latched onto the first part of that sentence and again stated that I'm just jealous and compared the situation to her announcing her engagement or pregnancy at my wedding, to which I responded that I never said she was invited to my wedding and given how childish she's acting, she shouldn't expect an invitation. My sister said I'm being a T and my parents both want me to apologize and re-invite her on the basis that it was one argument and my sister takes a lot of pride in being the first woman in our family to attend uni. So I really took the wind out of her sails here and need to cut her some slack over her emotional reaction rather than go full bridezilla. Am I being an a-hole? Not the idiot. You went to university before her. Yes, you took a few years off, but you going back and doing well is on you as a person. If it truly was because you were jealous, I don't think you would have kept going. She's being a sore loser. She should be happy for you, as should your parents. You have nothing to apologize for, and I would be worried about inviting her to my wedding when she said that this is the equivalent of her announcing a big life event at your wedding. You didn't announce this to any. You just told your mom on a phone call. Also, it's yours and your fiance's day. You get to choose who will be there. Not the idiot. You work so hard to get where you're at. You need support, and your sister can't see anywhere beyond herself. You have nothing to apologize for. Your sister, on the other hand, needs to grow up and realize how harmful her words can be. Congratulations on all your achievements. It's not easy going back to school, let alone having a child. Not the idiot. She should be happy for anyone graduating college. For her older sister to be graduating and getting married. Double congrats. If you don't feel comfortable sharing that you're in college, about to graduate, and getting married, I'd assume there are deeper issues at play. It sounds like you know your comfort levels. So keep on keeping on. My stepsister Amy and I, both 16 female, are in the same grade at school, but we've always had different friends and classes, so I didn't spend much time with her until this year. My dad and her mom met at a school event a couple years ago, and they got married this year due to an oops baby. Since her dad isn't in the picture, and my mom is overseas for work for a few years, the living situation has gotten weird, and Amy and her mom haven't done much to make that any better. I could tell Amy hated the whole idea of our parents being together from the start, and I thought it was just that she didn't like all the changes. I didn't know until later that it was partly because of me. She makes a lot of comments about me being Miss Perfect, and how everyone caters to me because I'm pretty. I think I'm average at best. I play sports so I stay in shape, but I'm nothing special and I can't do makeup to save my life. Since we all moved in together though, she has something snarky to say every time I do well at something or go out with friends or anything. I'm in honors classes and AP because the teachers pass me easy because I'm a suck up and an athlete. I get invitations and out of school opportunities because of my looks. My friends are all dumb jocks. People only like me because I'm pretty. It's really annoying and the parents wouldn't do anything about it except just laugh it off. So I finally snapped at her about it and said not even being pretty would make up for her ugly personality, so maybe she should work on herself instead of me. She screamed at me, and her mom got mad and told me I was being cruel. My dad did stick up for me, but told me later in private that Amy has a rough time socially and is depressed, and feels bad because I'm really high performing at school and people compare her to me now. He asked if I would try to not be as obvious about doing better than her, and I should stay home more or include her in more stuff so she feels better. I told him I'm just living my life, and I'm not going to do anything different just because she's jealous. I don't want to hang out with her because she's mean, and my friends don't deserve that. The best I'm going to do is ignore her from now on since she gets to throw shots, but sucks too much to take one back now and then. It's causing a lot of stress, and my stepmother says I'm a stuck-up brat. My dad has been trying to keep me home more, but I told him keeping me out of my clubs is going to look awesome for college scholarships, so he's frustrated. My mom says to just ignore them and do my thing but everyone else thinks I'm an a-hole. Not the idiot. Why is it that parental discipline only came into the picture is when you snapped and clapped back at your stepsister instead of correcting her bullying you? Your stepmother's a jerk, and your stepsister is likely just a product of her mother's parenting skills. Your dad trying to keep you home more and thus minimize your success is completely out of line. You're not the idiot. Why did the parents only get involved when you dished it out? They have sat back and witnessed her jealous snipe attacks, but only intervened when you finally gave her a taste of her own medicine. Not the idiot. She seems to be putting herself in the position of being a victim living in your shadow. This has nothing to do with you. She needs to join clubs and do things that interest her instead of picking at you. Her mother isn't helping either. My son is getting married soon, and his bride asked that the event be black tie formal dress only. She wanted my daughter to wear an off beige floor length dress. My daughter does not like to wear dresses though, and would like to wear pants instead. 
We cleared this with the bride, and she said okay, but that she would still prefer that my daughter wear a dress. My daughter's grandmother sent up outfit picture of some beautiful black pants and a beige top, and asked if my daughter would like to wear it to the wedding. I told her I wasn't sure if she could because the bride specifically said it was formal attire only. I went ahead and sent a picture of the outfit to the bride to get her opinion, and she was adamant about her not wearing it and cited that it would not meet the wedding standards. I found my daughter some off beige pants online to wear with the top, but they just came in, and they are sheer and see-through. Her grandmother stated that she is wearing black pants and a beige top to the wedding, and that my daughter can too. I said I was worried about that again, because I knew how the bride felt about it. Her grandmother said that the bride will be too busy to care about what they're wearing in the wedding day. I also know a few other family members not planning to follow the dress code. I personally think the dress code is awful and outdated and doesn't really reflect half the crowd coming. I bought my daughter some black pants at the grandma's encouragement. I feel like an a-hole because the bride has been asking me for months to get our outfits picked out, but it was so hard because we were just so busy with work and school. If your daughter wants to wear pants to the black tie event, she should wear a tuxedo in the woman's cut, not some random pants you picked out somewhere. You're the a-hole. You're the a-hole. It's a black tie event. You have had months to prepare. A tuxedo in a woman's cut would be appropriate. A blazer and some dress pants, a formal wear jumpsuit, all of those are options. And grandmas usually get a pass on things like this. Younger guests are expected to follow the dress code. If your daughter is going to attend in business casual, she should probably just stay home. You're the a-hole. Black tie formal is specific. If your daughter doesn't want to wear a dress, she needs to find a tuxedo or the equivalent that the bride and groom approve of. Business casual is absolutely not black tie. Everyone else choosing to disregard the dress code are a-holes. Edit 2. After reading many comments that people think it is as easy as googling a jumpsuit online, it is not. My daughter is extremely self-conscious about her body and doesn't want to show any skin and hasn't liked anything that she's tried on. I guess I am the a-hole, but would rather be an a-hole to the bride rather than to my daughter. I assumed I would be invited to my sister's wedding. I live in another country, and I purchased a flight to get home. One assumes that they are invited to their sister's wedding. My sister and I speak, and there is absolutely no indication she wouldn't have invited me. But I know that one should never assume and stuff, but why wouldn't I expect to be invited to my sister's wedding? Anyway, I am back in my home country temporarily for my other sister's wedding, and my sister said I am probably not invited to her wedding. She will need to see if there is space as her guest list, about 200, is already fairly hefty. I am now about a thousand pounds out of pocket on the flights. Note, I can't afford the thousand pounds, I just have zero idea why I am not invited to the wedding. My parents seem to be fine with it as my sister is allowed to choose her own guest list. I know my sister and I are talking as she has interacted with me, and I am babysitting her dog right this very second, and have done multiple times this week. Will I be the idiot if I asked her to pay for my flights now that I am not invited? No, you can't charge her for your ticket, but certainly start charging her for dog sitting. Not the idiot, but you are a very expensive paid dog sitter because you are now going to need payment for your work. Family is invited to a wedding and family does favors like dog sitting. You did not make the cut as family, so clearly she cannot expect free services that a family member would provide. Know your worth, and I'm so sorry that your family is apparently supporting her decision. I hope you take care of yourself and carefully evaluate how you need to be treated by them all in the future. I wouldn't ask her to refund your ticket. I would, however, ask her why the heck you're not invited. Sure, she can choose her own guest list, but it's good for one to know where one stands in a relationship. You say your dog's sitting right this very second, so to me it sounds like you're the only one giving in this relationship.